Hello, Steve Dangle here, and welcome to your favorite day, Thursday, because it's time for Steve's Dang it. Now, the Toronto Maple Leafs just had a home and home series against the New Jersey Devils. The Leafs had a comeback in one and a squash match in the other. But if you're a fan of my LFR videos, you'll remember that in my video about that particular game, I didn't say these exact words. That's because I was saving it for this video. So, <clears throat> me, me, me. If you're a goaltender, can the goal! Make right decisions. Understand, live to fight another day sometimes. Get the puck out. With difficulty controlling the puck was Gillies, and they cash in the Leafs to Jason Spezza with his second goal in as many nights. Toronto with a lead. Sloppy behind the net. Gillies has a tough time handling it. Little miscommunication with the defenseman. We'll take a look just to dump in here. You see he handles that puck toughly, and nobody picks up. Spencer, everybody gets puck watching again. I mean, I know Gillies had a trouble, had the trouble handling the puck, but you can't leave Spencer wide open there and quickly, just like that one in Toronto. But really, I do, I feel kind of bad. So let's set the scene. The New Jersey Devils have a 4-2 lead over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Things are going well. The Leafs scored four unanswered goals and defeated the Devils 6-4. That's bad. So the next game, the Devils go, all right, we're gonna rewrite the story here. What the heck, we're not the team that blows leads, they are! Mean, but at least somewhat based in truth, fine. Less than three minutes into the next game the following night in New Jersey, in their own building, this happens. Gillies decides I'm defenseman number three. Wayne Gritz, Pierre Engvall gets the puck and passes it in front to Jason Spezza for the vintage snipe. And all of that probably never happens if Gillies just stays in his net. But it's okay, the Devils staged their own heroic comeback. No, no, they lost 7-1, it was bad. Kinda set the tone for the rest of the night. That's a dang it. Now, typically when I'm screaming, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal, it's a goalie trying to help. You know, they had good intentions, you know, they, they, were, they were giving it a shot. They were trying to play the puck, try to help their team out. For this one, it's if you're a goaltender, what are you What are you doing? What are you doing? The COVID year last year, how long it's been in between his final game with his old team and his first game against him. Here's Eller, draws Holtby out and it's scored. McMichael. Holtby got drawn out by the time it got to McMichael. The 21 year old had an empty six by four. And he's got the fourth goal of the night for Washington. Again, the Stars' pressure on whoever has the puck has been a little iffy in the game tonight and loose. Eller's able to take and dangle it down deep. That puck pressure just hasn't been there at times. And Holpe got yanked out of his crease. Too far, got drifting a little bit, anticipating a shot. That just doesn't, ha that doesn't happen. I think that's a perfect example of this is just a different wacky night. What are you doing? Man, uh, Braden Holpe having somewhat of a resurgence with the Dallas Stars this season, but he's having a rather tough night against his former team in the Washington Capitals. Did you know that he was on the Capitals? They won a cup, that was the joke. And while on the Washington Capitals, he won a Stanley Cup, and on that Stanley Cup run, Braden Holpe made a number of saves for the Washington Capitals, and for all of those saves, he was in the net! I have never seen a goalie get lured out so badly. There's a reason Patrick Waugh used to talk to his goalposts, and that's because they would shout back where they were. If only Braden Holtby's had done the same for him on this play, that's a dang it. For a next dang it, oh my gosh, have you been watching the Florida Panthers? Lethal, they've been shooting the lights out. So much so that they don't care what net they score on. For the Florida Panthers, as Duclair brings one across, but turns it over to Zabatajad. He brings it in. Reeves cutting to the net, and it's put on net, and in! The Rangers score! It looks like it may have been Forsling with the stick out poking. An early odd man opportunity for the New York Rangers and something you don't want to give up early on in a hockey game, but for the New York Rangers, they're able to capitalize and it's Zibanejad who's trying to find Ryan Reeves on the back door. Gustav Forsling trying to do a job to intercept the pass, but inadvertently puts it top corner past his own goaltender, Spencer Knight, a tough break. Ah, uh, you know who says goals are more important than assists? On this play, Mika Zibanejad scored a goal with an assist. Everyone in the building thought Ryan Reeves got a silky pass from Zibanejad and it went in. Well, almost everyone. I think Gustav Forsling know who scored that goal. 
him on his own net. Dang it. For our next dang it, this one also involving the New York Rangers, Henrik Lundqvist, New York Rangers legend, being honored by the team and invited into the broadcast booth. You're gonna need your ears turned on for this one. Listen very closely. Feature of Garden of Dreams kids wishing you well, so that's something to look forward to as well. Here's your buddy Zook. Yeah, he, uh, don't let that guy score. Oh my God! <laughs> Did I just say you that? You just did. <laughs> you just did. He's that's, having a good season. Yeah, that's that's a 10-game point streak for him now, too. This is why I'm not in the booth. I should be in the studio and not do the play-by-play. -play. You don't say that. Then. <laughs> well, you know what? He's a great player. You know that. And uh, right side of your screen, eventually he'll get it. And some traffic in front. That just stayed low to the ice and ju just inside the far post. Yeah, I... That was a lucky shot. Okay, I, I know it's cute and funny and everything because Zuccarello's his friend, but leave a comment in the comment box. Is what Lundqvist did worse than just shouting shut out? Like the experience of a superstitious hockey fan at home is it's, it's contentious. It's a very anxious experience. You hear the broadcast team alluding to the fact that the, the goaltender hasn't allowed and they're figuring out how to say they have a shutout going without actually saying it. Even if they were to say they haven't allowed a goal, they'd be like, shut up! But as long as they don't say the shutout word. But imagine you're a fan of any team. Pick a team. The, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they're taking on, I don't know, the Washington Capitals. And whoever's on commentary that night just goes, oh, sure hope Ovechkin doesn't score. Tell me your reaction wouldn't be, shut up! Shut up! No! Now, did the broadcaster actually have something to do with it? I mean, it's Alexander Ovechkin. He's one of the best goal scorers of all time and soon will go down as the best goal scorer of all time. Counter argument. Yeah, it is the broadcaster's fault. Don't say that. Oh, Hank, you silly goose. We can't stay mad at you, but still, that's a dang it. For our next dang it, Robin Leonard makes two incredible saves. On his own defenseman? He's off and a lot of momentum has pulled the netminder for the extra attacker. And here they get it to point, point in front. It's a skate, rebound, Leonard down is behind them. They jam away and they score! They've tied this thing up. Get all your grinders and your best guys with the best hands out there. And the Lightning do it. Winning the faceoff was key for them. It was critical for them. Then no messing around here. This is about getting pucks into the paint and keeping it alive. Corey Perry starts it, and I'm not sure whose stick ends up putting it in. Perry keeps it alive right there. He got it in behind Robin Leonard, and you see how Leonard actually gets tweaked around? He's facing almost backwards when that puck goes in. So the Lightning find a way. John Cooper always aggressive, pulls his goaltender early. They get extra man out there. Leonard can't find it. Okay, here's what this dang it is for Zach Whitecloud. Um, you ever drop something and then you reach for it and you only smack it further away? Yeah, that's this. Man, Leonard had White Cloud every step of the way. He had eyes on the back of his head. Oh, uh, that's just unfortunate. And that's the thing about dang it's is they're not always mistakes. They're dang it's. That's exactly what White Cloud said here. If you listen close enough, you can hear it. Just the defenseman trying to clear the puck out of the blue paint for his goalie, and he ends up firing it into the back of him twice before the puck goes in the net. Yeah. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, oh boy, goalies take a, a beating in these videos, but any goalie watching right now knows this shot is a goalie's worst nightmare. Here's Jonathan Quick. Back on it there. And he'll twist and turn as the Flyers are beginning to change players and then send a bouncer. Say quick rebound, Atkinson, he scores! If you can try it, I can do it better. The Flyers perfect that flip shot. And Atkinson beats quick to make it 2-0 Philadelphia. Well, there's some smart players on the ice in this game, and Claude Giroux makes a really smart play. As advertised, the intentional bouncing shot on quick. Quick can't handle it, and Atkinson swoops in and buries it. Love the reaction there. Just a great shot, though, by Atkinson. Deneau could not finish his attempt at the other end of the ice, but Atkinson yeah, you know exactly what I mean. You can look at this and go, what on 
earth is Jonathan Quick doing here? And, well, I mean, you'd be right. But any goalie knows that's a nightmare. First of all, from that distance, no matter what, if the puck goes in, it's going to look terrible. Which should make that save easy, right? Well, that depends what you think easy is. Do you think it is easy to guess the trajectory of a long distance bouncing piece of rubber on a sheet of ice? I don't think so. To his credit, Jonathan Quick does make the first save, but gives up one of the worst rebounds I've ever seen. And yeah, that one goes in. Amazingly, that was the first goal he allowed all night and two of the easiest points Giroux or Atkinson have ever picked up. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, this one was tweeted at me and producer Drew, producer Nick, Sportsnet, every account under the brand a thousand times. So suffice to say, we got it. Now things were going well for the St. Louis Blues and in particular Vili Uso to start this game. They're up one nothing on the Winnipeg Jets and Uso has stopped all eight shots he's faced. And then, well, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Whoa. Pacific. There's a collision as Kyrou ran into his own man Falk, and the Jets score. Paul Stasty took advantage of the malfunction at the junction as two Blues ran into each other, and Kyrou is feeling the effects of it. Well, the hometown kid, Stasty from St. Louis, grew up there, gets the Winnipeg Jets back on the board, and hey, maybe it's time for a bit of a break for the Winnipeg Jets, the way it's been going of late. And here's the collision there, I mean, Cairo just goes back and then runs into Falk and then the puck ends up right on Stasty's stick. And he has a gift here after Falk loses the puck. I'm not sure where Husso was going there, but he was taken off on that one. And there's the collision. Now Falk's trying to get back. The goalie tries to field the puck. That doesn't go so well. Listen, I'm going to point out that Justin Falk has not had a nice time since talking about Canada. I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to start anything. Just, you know, observation. Speaking of observation, this could have been pretty bad. Falk and his teammate Jordan Cairo don't see each other, obviously, and Falk lays him out. kairu has been having an amazing season, too. I know I always say if you're a goaltender, tend the goal, but this is a situation where Villiuso leaves the net, and I'm kind of like, yeah, that might have been the right move. On account of everyone else was involved in a yard sale. Ah, uh, last not. Winnipeg Jets get the puck. They shove it into the St. Louis Blues net, which I don't know if you know the rules of hockey. That's a bad thing. I had to look that one up myself. And it's a double dang it. For our last dang it, I wanted to end on something wholesome. Uh, this, this one I had to save for last because each time I watch it, there's something else I love. It's a game between the Colorado Avalanche and Chicago Blackhawks in Chicago. Brandon Hagel going into the boards in a battle with Eric Johnson. Pay very close attention to the fans behind the glass because someone's about to lose their beer. Bonus points for the commentary. If you're gonna sit in the front row, partner, and you have your beverage right here, and there's contact coming, <laughs> you better have a plan B, right? I don't know what he's having, I don't know if he's having a hot dog or something going on, but watch his beer, but watch his reaction. <laughs> oh no! Look at, I told you not to put it up there! Okay, first of all, dude, I love these. I, I watch enough hockey, I see enough highlights that I pick up on trends, right? We talk about how goalies are misplaying the puck more often this season, it seems. You know what other trend I've noticed? There's something like this every, at least every couple weeks. It's hockey, they're still hitting. Everyone talks about, oh, hockey's not the way it used to be. No, it's not the way it used to be. Games don't take five hours. But there are still hits, in particular, along the boards. At very least, there is body contact. So logically, don't put your beer against the glass! This guy does, and, and we need to do a breakdown of everyone involves reaction. First, we got gray shirt business guy. It's his beer that's about to get knocked over. Now, if you'll notice, there are two NHL players two feet away from him, separated by a pane of glass, and he doesn't even know they're there! He's not even looking! And you can tell they catch him by surprise, and you can tell he foresaw this happening. Because look at his face. Can we zoom in on his face? No! The beer, like, it was still, he could have salvaged it had both hands been available. No, 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 it's all over your lap. And listen, you don't want to spill your beer, but if you have to spill it anywhere, like, like, spill it maybe on a pant leg, spill it, spill it on a sleeve, don't right in the lap. And this dude opens him up by opening up his lap as wide as possible. He does an incredible job with holding a swear, and his buddy, the dude next to him in the Blackhawks hoodie, just pats him on the back immediately. Immediate empathy. We love a good friend. For the next two people, I think the commentator nailed it. The two ladies sitting next to him with the black and yellow hats, their face says it all. We told you this was going to happen! Their faces seem to say, Doug, 
We told you. It, the faces seem to imply this isn't the first time it's happened to Doug. The face that says we can't take Doug anywhere! But easily my favorite reaction of the whole bunch. The woman with the toque next to the dude in the Blackhawks hoodie. Watch, watch her face. Watch, watch. Here they come. Contact. The beer takes a dive. She's like, wow! Oh, and the beer! Look! Ah! <laughs> Opposite of the dude in the hoodie. Dude in the hoodie, oh shucks friend, that sucks, let me get you another one. Lady in the toque? <laughs> and folks, I gotta tell you, she's right. Her face, that's legendary, fantastic stuff. You cannot, oh, I, who is that person? Who is that person? Thank you genuinely. No, not Doug, we can't take you anywhere, Doug. I'm talking about the woman in the toque. I'm, I'm tears, tears laughing. Here, just one more time, one more time. Boom, contact, beer, it goes. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 You can't, you just can't pay for that kind of a laugh. It's so good. Oh my god, I wish I could bottle, bottle this feeling. I, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. There, there are Hollywood actors who don't have that kind of, of range in their face. Oh, and the award for best supporting actress in a comedy is Lady in the Toque at a Blackhawks game. Come on down. Absolutely fantastic. Oh my God. Uh, whatever about Doug with the beer. That, that's a dang it for him, but she is a hat pick, a, a toque pick. This is fantastic. I'm going to be thinking about that the rest of the day. Did we forget any dang it? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. It's actually tears. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like. If you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends. Can we do it one more time, please? Bang! Along the boards. Tumble goes the beer. Oh! Oh! Ah!